Your relationship with your manager, is it good or bad? Put for me in the comments, good or bad, right? Because that's what we need to speak about today. Because your relationship with your manager actually determines a whole lot of things, guys. It determines a whole lot of things. So put in the comments for me and tell me about your relationship with your manager, the person that you are reporting to. Do you guys have a good relationship or do you guys have a bad relationship? Okay, Lele is good. I'm so happy. I'm so shocked actually you guys are starting with good. La TM says good. Okay, I'm so happy. I'm really, really, really happy. Okti saying good. Wow, you guys. I'm so proud of you guys that have good relationships with your managers. It's important, guys. And we're going to speak about the advantage of that, right? Why it's important for you to have a good relationship with your manager. Your manager is your first point of contact, in many things that you do, right? So that means if there is, um, Calvin is saying it's neutral. Calvin, neutral is good. Neutral is good. Um, you know, it's um, Nana Lee saying it's in between. In between is good, okay? Um, as long as it's not bad, you know, then you then you are sorted. Thank you, Hunze and Wendy, for following. Guys, if you're not following me, please make sure that you follow, okay? So, guys, um, your, your, your manager is the first point of call in a lot of things. So having a good relationship with them, has many advantages, right? Every promotion that I've gotten was due to my manager. Any opportunity I've gotten to go and speak at an event and whatnot, right, except for the ones that I have gotten myself, it was my manager who recommended me. And all of those things that my manager recommended me to, right? Thank you, Batobile, for coming through. I see you. Our queen captain is here, right? So it... it all of the opportunities that I've gotten to become a speaker at events, to be featured in the newsletter, uh, to meet other executives has been through my managers. I remember even with my first board meeting, I got into my first board meeting. Thank you, Batobile. I got into my first board meeting before I was even a director, before I was even a board member. And it was my manager who actually said to me, come through to the board meeting because I feel like you've got a lot of things that you can share. So when you have a good relationship with them, guys, they recommend you for things, right? Even when you put them on your, as a reference. Thank you, OZM, for coming through. I see you, right? Agreed. My current job was a referral from my former boss. Exactly. You understand? So you can even put them on your references when you're looking for jobs, when your relationship is good. And guys, there's no re um, a reference that counts the most like from your previous boss or your current boss or whatever the case is. Even when you are job hunting and you have a good relationship with your manager, I'm telling you, Klee, hi, thank you for coming through. They understand that you are moving to bigger things. They actually encourage it. And they say, listen here, I don't mind you job hunting. Um, I've got a couple of jobs that you can look at and so forth. So having a good relationship with your manager, guys, is very advantageous. You can't live a life of constantly ignoring your manager or constantly being at odds with your manager right? You need to make a plan and see how you can improve it. So one of the biggest advantages, guys, they will recommend things to you. They will take your growth seriously. You understand? So, I mean, don't be hostile, right? But don't be too friendly as well. So you have to sort of like strike a balance between the two. So what does that relationship look like? When I'm talking about a good relationship, guys, I'm not talking about hugging and then we are drinking together and then we are visiting each other and then we are discussing soccer and whatnot. With my managers, what I used to do is I used to show them that they can depend on me, right? If they are not here, I can take a meeting for them, right? Um, if they are too swamped with work, I can get in and say, listen here, you've got a couple of emails you, you want to respond to. Give me three of them. I can respond to them. So I was showing them that they can depend on me. But you could never, you will never see us sitting. Hi, Shumi. Thank you for coming through, right? But you will never see us sitting in the table together and having lunch together and discussing sports together and, and whatnot. You understand what I'm saying? So uh, when I'm talking about a good relationship, as long as you guys can have that professional relationship where they understand that they can depend on you, to me, that is a win. That is a win, right? Whether you guys speak three or four times a day, thank you, Shumi right for the gift right whether you guys speak four or five times a day that's irrelevant whether you guys laugh whether you guys share the same jokes that's irrelevant right when you are sitting together and then you are talking about work if you can show them that they can depend on you i'm telling you you are sorted like the ship can run when you are not around that's what they're looking for and that's what we're talking about when we're saying it's a relationship so i mean it's literally spending 10 minutes when you walk into their office 
just to discuss important stuff. So I used to walk in all the time, right, and say, um, thank you, Shumi. I really appreciate them roses, right? So I used to walk into my manager's offices and be like, hey, man, what's going on? Um, I know that we are sitting with this issue with this particular client, uh, you know, who's querying this, 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 and that. I'm going to be around uh, Senten, and I know the client is, is in Senten. If you don't mind, I can go. I've got another meeting there, and then I'll pass by Senten, and then just to hear what the client... So I even take the heat for them, right? I even take a little bit of the heat for them so that they can carry on doing what they need to do. Guys, it's about sympathy. It's about empathy. It's about Duxuelan. You know, you understand the position that they're in because as a manager, right, um... Uh, this is my intern. Okay, promise, babe. Promise, babe. We we want you. Promise, babe. Ne? We want you. When I promise, babe. You must you must come through for your session, right? So that's 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 what you want you you want to show them. It's 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 that relationship of saying I understand the pressure that you're dealing with, because as a manager you report to directors and directors we are not the friendliest people. I think I'm the friendliest director in the planet, right? But when I'm at work, guys, this is not the side that you see. You know, so if you show them that you understand the pressures that they deal with on a daily basis when it comes to um, the directors that they, they, they report to or the board that they report to, if you can show them that you understand, you know, just come in in the morning and like, yo, dude, what's going on? Yes, a manager, you must take all the heat. Exactly. You get what I'm saying? True, I was working for a bank with my manager. She got a job at B Bank and she recommended me. There you go. You see now, the same thing with Okti. So when they move, they take you with you. One of the managers that I met um, in 2000 and seven in my second job in 2000 and no 2000 and, yeah 2007 in my second job um i had a very good relationship with him right so i would say to him i will take don't worry i'll take care of this um you know i can see he's sitting he's swamped he's on the phone and then he's getting stressed but he also has to make sure that the company is running because his job is to make sure that the division is functional but now he's dealing with his operational issues i used to say to him listen here don't worry like leave leave this to me right you go carry on doing what needs to be done for the company to grow in 2010, when the World Cup started, he started his own business. Guess who was the first employee there? It was me on a high S salary, top-notch salary. He took me in, put me directly into a senior management position. And he remembered me because he left before me in that company that we were working for. And then he disappeared for a while. So I haven't seen, you can see 2007 to 2010, I hadn't seen him until I got a call from him in 2010 and said, I started my business, we've got big contracts, so let's push. You get what I'm saying? So that's because I had that good relationship with him. But it wasn't a laughing relationship, guys. It wasn't a happy relationship. It wasn't a... When I'm talking about a good relationship, guys, it's, it's, it's very professional and they can depend on you professionally. So you have to put yourself in that position. Um, you guys remember I, I did a masterclass once. Um, for those who missed the masterclasses, go and check it out, right? And then um, I actually did a blog article about it where I was saying, if you want to get yourself a promotion very fast, one of the things that you need to do is you need to be able to evaluate the processes and systems within your department and change them so that they improve. So I used to do that without him prompting it. And then I would go to him and say, I have a presentation for you. This is what I think we should do, right? I can see that currently the way the process runs is that we get an application form and then this one processes it and whatnot. I think it creates a bottleneck here. I was thinking we should change it like this. And was like, dude, thank you for making my job easy. Go ahead and implement it. And that's the kind of good relationship that I'm talking about, right? So, guys, it's, it's, it's very beneficial that you have it because I'm telling you, these people will remember you for years and years and years to come. Even some of the people that I, 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 I used to report to, I mean, they still come back even today and say, listen, we've started a new nonprofit organization. Can you please come sit on the board? Um, we started this thing. Can you please sit in this committee and whatnot? And that's because they knew they could depend on me. So you guys need to show your managers that they can depend on you. Right. The difficult part is where you have a, a, a manager who's full of nonsense. Hi, 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 Joshu. Um, I'm going to see you tonight. Ne? Uh, I think. Yeah, I think. Yes, I think I'm with you tonight. Yes. There's somebody. Lerato. I, I need to speak to Lerato. We need to do her session tomorrow. Um, same story, coach. My current employer was my manager at some point. There you go. There you go. You see, Christopher is uh, Miss P saying I get you exactly. Yes, I'm glad. Right. Um, Yes, so guys, um, yeah, I've, I've caught up with all of the comments. So guys, it's very critical. You, 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 you have to show them that they can depend on you. There's a skill called stakeholder engagement, guys. Please go Google it. Go Google a skill called stakeholder engagement and look at what it entails. This is one skill that you need if you're going to build a good relationship with your manager. Stakeholder engagement. Go check it out, guys. It's a very important skill. Because what stakeholder engagement teaches you is to be able to speak to other partners that are outside of the organization. 
And that's what your manager is looking for sometimes, right? They want to know that you can independently take care of a meeting when they can't take it. But if everything is on them, and then now you are one of those people, every time you get into the office, you have so many questions for him, like, when are we doing this? When are we getting this? Uh, when, when can you submit this to me? Right? Thank you, Christopher, for the rose. And I used to be the kind of guy who does not say, when are you going to send this through to us? I would walk in and say, listen, I noticed that we haven't done A, B, C, and D. Do you want me to take care of it? And my manager would be like, 100%. You know, I say, how do one deal with a manager who doesn't delegate until shit hits the fan, then blame us? You see, Kiftana, that's what I was going to get into. That this topic is outside. And that's what we're going to do when I talk about some, some challenges when I point number three, Mkiftana, because there are challenges when it comes to building some relationships. But I think a lot of us are fortunate. So if you're, if you're in a relationship that's neutral, and then you and your manager are not fighting, there's no toxicity, I would say, take a step further and show them you can give them the support that they require. Show them that you understand that being a manager is not easy. Guys, being a manager is not easy. You all know, executive director, even worse. So when you have a team of soldiers and captains, like think about the mafia, um, the mafia structure, right? Where you have the, um, the, you know, the boss, the underboss, you have the couples, you have the conciliary and whatnot. It's like you want to, you know, the boss must, must relax. The boss must focus on how they can expand to other countries and whatnot. Not that I'm promoting things that are out of order. I'm just giving you this because that's the structure that I study the most that I think it's solid, you know? So that's what you want to do. Right? You want to show them that, listen here, I'm the captain. I'm here. Right? The, 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 the ship is going to float. Right? How do you deal with a manager who shoots first and asks questions later? Kumbu, we're going to get into number three. Same with she affirms. Toxicity, we're going to deal with number three just now. Right? Kidi, thank you for coming through. So for those who have a good relationship, trust me, keep it like that. And then for those who have a neutral relationship, I think you have an opportunity to just take it the next step. Just a little bit, just a notch. Guys, it's called building networks. It's called networking. So you are building networks right now with your, with your current bosses because they're going to be directors. Guys, there are people that, <laughs> you know when I can tell you stories, ne? Um, uh, Tabang, Takalo, and Maruping currently work for the hubs that I'm running for Tlenko. And I took them from the previous companies that I worked for. And because they are the ones that stood out the most when I was an executive director in that particular company, they stood up the most because they used to say to me, Chief, don't worry, you go to this meeting, we will hold the fort. And I took them with me now into the two hubs that I'm running and they're earning top dollar. Top dollar. Coach, I'm here, but just attending some work issues. Don't worry, Shumi. You and I had, an, had a one-hour conversation. We had our own master class. Uh, Shumi and I had a 11 to 12. Uh, we had a very long conversation. Actually, until 5 past 12. So it's okay, Shumi. Don't worry. So you understand what I'm saying? I got them from there because they were my captains. They looked out for me. And then there's a lot of managers that I could have taken and brought into these two business hubs that I'm running. Right? But they thought they were smart. They were trying to outsmart me all the time. They were talking nonsense all the time. So they missed out on an opportunity for me to bring them into bigger projects. They missed out on opportunities for that. Last year, when we had a big contract with one of the mines to work with 80 um, small businesses, and they paid me top dollar for that, the people that I brought in to manage the project is, pe is people that I worked with before. They worked under me before, and they were my captains. They pushed with me. And I brought them into the project. And all of the people that actually were full of crap, they missed out on an opportunity to come with me and get top dollar. And I'm sitting with a lot of projects that are still coming. You know, there's this one girl, Tuli Buzani. I'm still looking for her even today. I was asking for her numbers because in this particular project that I'm going to get now, guys, I just signed a very sweet deal um, yesterday. Very nice, sweet deal for SMME development, for SMME coaching. I'm so excited about it, right? So, I mean, this girl, I'm looking for her. I'm looking for Tuli Buzani because she was my captain. I remember one day we had the commissioner coming in to investigate some stuff and whatnot. And then um, Tuli said to me, Sbu, go home. You've been here since the morning. I'd go home. When I called her, it was 7 o'clock. She said, only now I'm leaving. And I'm telling you right now, that's where I'm actually, I, I want her. I'm going to take her with me. So that's what happens when you have a good relationship with your boss. Thank you guys for the congratulations. Uh, it's a sweet deal, guys. I've been looking for this deal. I'm telling you. You see, but the thing is me, I hustle 24-7. I don't play that game. I hustle 24-7, right? It's me first all the time, 24-7. That's what I do. 
And then I've got a couple of more that are busy pending, you know. So before the end of the year, we're going to be closing these deals. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. You get what I'm saying? So, guys, that's why it's good to build that good relationship. Um, hey, Fifi, thank you for coming through, Mrs. Sne. Uh, Mrs. Sne, uh, we don't want to create bombs here. Right. So, guys, yes, please follow me if you're not following me. So, guys, it's important. Please make an effort to build a relationship with your manager. Please make an effort to build it. Right. Do not make assumptions that they are full of crap. They are hostile because here's something that you don't understand. Put yourself in their shoes and understand what it's like to report to a board of directors, guys. So it's a very stressful job. So sometimes it's not that they are deliberately trying to be toxic right or they're deliberately trying to fight you guys when a manager is feeling pressure and the board is looking for something it's just that managers are not transparent enough to tell you what guys i i'm in trouble right now can you please help me they're not transparent enough and that's because that's how they are built they need to show this strong character and this strong leadership so never assume that i'm telling you it's a very you know, you, you got what i'm saying it's, it's, it's a very toxic person have empathy and understand their standpoint Understand where they are coming from and open up that conversation. Guys, you would be surprised. So, for example, somebody said um, a manager who uh, shoots and then asks questions after and then uh, a manager who does things and then blames you and everything like that. You don't know what it takes um, or how much it means to them. If you were to walk into the office and say, do you have five minutes? And then you walk in there and you say, listen here, I can see that, you know, there's a little bit of pressure that you're feeling and I want to know how I can support you. Guys, that can change the whole conversation. That mean person that you know, it can change like nobody's business. You understand what I'm saying? Things can change immediately. I remember when I walked into a company um, in, in, in 2017, I, walk, I, I worked for this company. And then um, when I got in, I was a specialist reporting to a team leader, right? And then as time went on, what HR picked up is that I had more skills than the team leader, but the team leader had a higher qualification than me because she had a master's. I had an undergrad in economics. And then um, I had to report to her. And after some time, they realized my skills were higher. Within three months, they promoted me to team leader, right? So we were both team leaders now. And then um, I justified my case. And then in space of two months, they made me her manager. So in less than six months, she was reporting to me. And she, we were not having a good relationship because of that, right? We did not have a good relationship. So in my head, I said, this movement maybe is full of nonsense. And she thought I'm full of nonsense, right? So our relationship was just horrible. We were just not working nicely together and whatnot. You know, guys, one day I pulled her into my office and I sat her down and I said, what is the problem? And she told me about my character, you know, the way you, you, you speak to us, the way this, the way that. And I was reporting directly to the CEO, right? It was a senior management position. I was reporting directly to the CEO. So she said, my attitude, this and that. And I said to her, listen, here, can I explain my job to you? Then when I explained it to her, she actually sat back and said, I, I feel so bad because I did not understand the pressures that you face. As team leader, I should have been supporting you. A team leader should have been supporting you. And then she even cried. And guys, I was like, the reason why we thought there was toxicity is simply because of misunderstanding. We just never spoke. We just never had a conversation. We never spoke. You know, the CEO that I was reporting to at that time, I will never forget her. I was thinking about her last night because she used to say to me, you are the biggest support structure to me because every time I go to a board meeting, Smoo, you have no idea. It's war in there. But ever since you came in, I feel so comfortable because I can depend on you. That's why she even brought me to a board meeting, two board meetings, and said the board is going to ask me questions that I don't understand. But I think it's time for you to get into the board so that other executives can see you, so that you can grow in this company because you've been giving me support. I don't want to get in there and claim credit for everything. And that's because of how I approached her. And then she was like, I need to reciprocate this energy. She took me to put two Two board meetings and then that was me, gone. Director Somar for life, Nje. You understand what I'm saying? So yes, assumptions is a very big problem, guys. Do not assume, you need to understand why managers act the way they act. You need to understand why directors act the way they act. Guys, it's tough. And they're looking for all the support that they can get. And if you can just come in and be that guy. And then that's why excellence and high performance is, is important, guys. That's why you need to take yourself to an executive level thinking right now.
Because that is really going to push you. Once you are in a settled relationship with your manager, I am telling you. I am telling you, right? Because the thing is, um, when I left that company, that was the first CEO that ever cried for me. That woman cried tears. Cried tears, bruh. Like, I can't believe, like, you're leaving. Like, what am I going she, I mean, she cried tears, you know? And that's because I was the biggest support. I was taking her to big meetings. I did a video, and then I said, one of the most important skills that companies love is networking. I was a, I was a serial networker. So I could put her into big boardrooms, and it didn't cost me anything. It didn't cost me anything. And that built the relationship. And even today, she recommends me for deals and everything. You know, guys, so it's very important, guys, that you build those relationships. They must ask, yes, Mpo, are you a manager? I think Mpo is a manager. Um, okay, I can attest to that. Being in a settled relationship does the most. It does the most, guys, right? So dealing with toxicity, guys, you might find that there's no toxic, there's nothing toxic. There's just a huge misunderstanding. Nothing is as stressful as a manager's job. Nothing is as stressful as an executive's job. So if you don't show that empathy, you will never build that relationship. If you don't build that relationship, you're going to miss out on a whole lot of opportunities. Because your references on your CV, guys, is, all, is always going to be the administrator. And guys, don't say I'm undermining people's positions. An, an administrator's position is important. Then the receptionist's position is important. I'm just saying when it comes to references, you know, those positions are, mm, you understand what I'm saying. So yeah, uh, my manager felt threatened each time she put me in charge in her absence she saw a threat and it happens giddy it happens but you need to understand giddy that personality it's a personality thing that you need to deal with right and some of them you can't deal with so it's either you can deal with or you leave right because you can't sit under a person who's toxic forever and ever amen then you, you're not a tree you must move to a different but before you move i would say make a little bit of an effort and understand that personality why does this person feel threatened Right? How can you assure this person that, listen here, we, we're a team. Actually, when the person feels threatened about you, it's easier to build a relationship for me because they are the ones that are scared of you. So you are the one who can drive conversations. But if you can show them that, listen here, we're together. We're doing this thing. That, like, listen, I understand where you're coming from. You are a manager and then you're, you need to get into an executive position. And me, I need to get into management. We can work together on this. Right? It, it, it's all about communication, guys. Right at the end of the day, uh, Refilo says my manager is amazing. She gives me advice. Oh, Refilo, I love those kinds of managers. I'm that kind of guy. You know, some would disagree. Um, I also think it's important that we build our managers without expecting payment. And that's what I'm saying, Shumi. Because here's the thing, guys. Right? It's it's what we call ulterior motives. You understand? It's what I say. I, I call ulterior motives. Right? So it's a win-win situation. You are trying to get them in a position where they have a good relationship with you, knowing that you want to use them as a reference in future. You see, guys, it's a game. So I need to share this video with my warehouse team. It will be helpful. Giftana, it's going to be on YouTube. Giftana is going to be on YouTube. Um, join the WhatsApp group or go to YouTube, Career Emporium, and then you can just share it with, with, with your team, right? Uh, I left with no plan. It's painful. But ready, I don't, guys, I don't recommend. I do not recommend that you leave with no plan. Guys, I'm, I always say this, and I know it's because some of you guys are at the verge of a mental breakdown and whatnot. But guys, I need you to find resources that are going to help you to remain stronger and much more sane while you look for something else. Do not leave without a plan, guys. I do not recommend it. And yes, mental health does come first. I'm not debating that, but your mental health will become worse if you are sitting at home now, you are not working and you're going to struggle to find a job because companies love people that are employed. We employ people that are employed. We poach from other companies. That's why you apply for a job when you are still working. That's, a, that's the best position you can ever be in. And I'm sorry to hear that it's painful. Do you have a video that will help them as this live? Uh, so I, 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 I can save it. Giftana is going to be on YouTube, my friend. Don't worry. Tomorrow morning it's going to be there when you can just share it with your people. Thank you. Upwards leadership. Yes. Um, never live without a plan, guys. Please connect with me if you, if you, if you add, want to live without a plan. Good afternoon. How do I join the WhatsApp group? WhatsApp group, you can join it. Go to kerryamporiam.co.za. You will find a link that says join WhatsApp group and then get in the WhatsApp group. Then I share... Um, whenever a video is out, I will share it and say, guys, it's now on YouTube, right? So that you can get it. Um, yeah. So, guys, um, that's those are your two options. It's either you're going to leave, but when you leave, leave properly. There's a there's an article I wrote on kerempuram.co.za. Go to the blog where it says how to leave your toxic environment properly. 
properly, right? Go read that article. It would help you to live properly. Don't just jump off, guys. Your mental health is going to deteriorate even more when you are sitting at home and then now you are not getting a job. That just makes it worse. I mean, I hate being here at my workplace. No growth, but I will go when I got something better. Exactly. And Octi, Octi, they are looking for you. There's somebody who's looking for you. There's a company that is looking for you. Guys, all of you guys, I'm a testament to this. I always got into companies that are looking for me. So work your LinkedIn magic. Keep putting out your content. Keep connecting with um, 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 talent acquisition managers and HR managers when you are on LinkedIn. I wouldn't advise connecting with recruiters, but connect with them. But I would rather you be speaking directly to an HR manager of a company that you want to work for, right? And then get them to see your content. Get them to see how clever you are. Work your LinkedIn magic. Something better is going to come your way. But all of you guys, there's somebody who's looking for you. Guys, I will have a lot of typos because I'm trying to multitask. It's fine, Shumi. I already know you know English. So it's okay. You are excused, right? So guys, that's what I need you guys to do, right? So there are challenges. I understand. There's no open communication. There's toxicity or what? Whatever you want to call it. But guys, listen, you have to especially if you love the company that you're in, right? Because I said option number two is to leave. And sometimes the company that you're in, maybe it's not the company that you want to, to leave. Yes, I know already, coach, confidence, exactly, you know. Um, the company that maybe sometimes you don't want to leave the company because people don't leave companies, they leave managers. I'm not sure if you, if you guys know this quote. People don't leave companies, they leave their managers. And sometimes you leave your manager, but you are in a company that can give you a lot of growth opportunities. So it's not the best time to run away. So you have to try and meet this person. And also, guys, meet them. Uh, let me tell you something about toxic managers, okay? Toxic managers, you have to meet them at a level of... See them as, 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 as weak, fragile people when you approach them. So toxic managers are not strong people as they... As, as you, you understand, as, as they claim... Toxic managers are not as strong as they claim. So you need to find a way to bring them. They are puppies. Literally, they have their tails between their legs. They are the, they are the, they are the, they are the weakest people I know. But they act so strong. That's why they, they have to overcompensate with a bad attitude and whatnot. So I've dealt with them. And I always sit them down and be like, okay, dude, um, can we talk? I mean, there's a project that's coming up. Um, what can we do? You know, how can we move forward? And the person will go bah, 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 and shout and shout and shout. And I'll sit there and listen and say, no, chief, listen, I was thinking we move this direction. So you have to keep calm because toxic managers are weak. You have to bring them down to the level. And then and be like, oh, you know, and because that's what they're looking for. And they break. And they break and then they start crying. Yeah, because, you know, things are so difficult. Yeah, da, da. That's your end. Now you can get in and calm them down and say, man, listen here, I'm the support that you need. You don't need to keep being toxic and what, what, right? I'm the support that you need. Tell me, what, what do you want us to do? I'll take care of this meeting. You go rest. You go have coffee. You understand? So that's what's important, guys. You understand? Yes, toxic managers are actually weak. Guys, they are weak. They are weak. They overcompensate with a horrible attitude. But they are, they are the weakest opponents I've ever faced in my life. Like, easy, easy, easy. How does one position themselves to network? I'm a consultant who now has a network, has to network to save jobs. Yes. Laftando, I'm loving your question. Your question is very beautiful. Laftando, let me tell you, most of my networks that I have right now, I got them on LinkedIn. All of them. The deal that I closed yesterday, LinkedIn. You will never believe everybody who's on my phone book right now. I mean, um, somebody called me and said they want me to come and do a talk in KZN. Um, you know, um, for, uh, um, for, for, for youth in, in, in entrepreneurship, right? I did a talk at the African Women's Chartered Accountant event, right? All of those connections are LinkedIn. So your LinkedIn is your best place. When I used to introduce my, 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 my manager, um, you know, to, 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 and put her in big boardrooms with big managers and big CEOs, all of them were LinkedIn. Literally networking while I'm sitting in bed, guys right? Toxic manager also sees something in you. That's a good thing. Exactly. So guys, you need to change your outlook. Remember I told you about mindset shifts that you need. You need a mindset, a mindset shift. You understand? So that's why I'm saying there's a, you have to look at things differently. Is it a toxic manager or is it a wounded lion that's trying to protect itself? And what can you do to save that wounded lion? 
right? In order for you at the end of the day to be able to leverage them as a reference on your CV. So you're not doing this like just Jay from the kind of sort of your heart. You're doing this so that they can recommend you for opportunities. You're doing this so that when they start their companies, they can call you in. You're doing this so that when they move to a bigger company, they can say, hey, there's this person that I like. Can I bring them with me? A lot of managers leave with their subordinates. A lot of managers that I've seen leave with their subordinates. So that's why you're doing this. That's why you are building this relationship. You're not doing it because you're trying to be friends. You understand? What advice and steps would you advise a shy reserved person to take in order to be visible at work? Ah, Nosipo, I like that. Nosipo, being visible at work is not necessarily talking. You understand? It's not necessarily walking around. It's not necessarily, it's actually being known for something. Go onto, onto YouTube, um, Nosipo, and check a video that says how to brand yourself, uh, no, personal Branding for career development. Go check it out on YouTube, Career Emporium. I've got a, a, we did a full live on that. And then you'll understand. But it's not about being loud. It's about being known for approaching situations a specific way. And that makes you stand out whether you're quiet or not. Right? How you, 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 you work within the team. Right? How you, you, you work towards changing processes and systems. That's all. So you don't need to be loud. You don't need to be jumping up and down. A lot of the people that are loud in the office, let me tell you something. They don't get promoted because they know nothing except to be class clowns. But some of them can balance the two. You can't be a class clown while you are failing. You understand what I'm saying? But go check it out. Dumelang, I'm late. Kobot, so thank you for coming through. I see you. Tried the link on WhatsApp. Could not get through. Says I don't have uh, WhatsApp. Okay, fine. Can you still please um, inbox my moderators, Nanali, Okti, and Batobile, and then they will be able to assist you and Kopozo as well, or inbox me directly, and then we will add you to the WhatsApp group. So guys, if you struggle with the WhatsApp group, you can, you know... Um, um, yeah, LinkedIn will plug us. LinkedIn will plug us. LinkedIn is plugging us. That's where the money is. So we have to be selfish. I feel guilty every time I make conversation with my... You have to be selfish, Lisa. Lisa, I always say this openly. You need to be so selfish when it comes to your personal development. You need to be extremely, extremely selfish. But do it in such a way that does not destroy the other person. Right? At least make sure that you are both winning. But we all have ulterior motives. Guys, the aim of networks is, is to leverage them. People have been me, leveraging me. I've been leveraging people. That's just how life works. Right? I'm not talking about your friends and your family. There, you know, it's something real. But, I mean, in a professional environment, you have to be so selfish about your, your growth. You need to know what you want from a person. But without destroying them, never destroy them. Never, ever destroy a person. Right? Leveraging and destroying a person are two different things. Ask me. I'm in business. We leverage each other. I have to do a presentation. Wish I could borrow you now on Tuesday. <laughs> Fifi, pretend you are me. Uh, pretend you are me because I know that I'm building. Exactly, guys, we are building. I mean, our current workplaces are stepping stones for us to become directors somewhere else, probably. Right? You play the game. It's Game of Thrones, guys. But don't play a game in such a way that you destroy other people. Please, guys, do me that favor. Do not destroy somebody. I need an advice. Um, Subi, go to Kerem and put them. Oh, Subi, you're the one that spoke about uh, being unemployed. I'll come back to you just now. Uh, Naima, hey, hey, hey. Hashtag Fetch Army. Uh, selfish is the master game. I'm telling you guys, you need to be selfish because, um, yeah. Do you do one-on-one -on -one session? Yes, Shula, do one-on-one -on -one sessions. Go to kerempuram.co.za, book your one-on-one -on -one session, and let's deal with your current, your, um, your career strategy. Uh, I've been applying, no reply. Subi, there's two potential problems that you have there. Number one, your job applications are not completed correctly, right? And then this is what a lot of people overlook. Your job applications, guys, are wrong. I receive a lot of wrong job applications. It's not enough just to send the CV. You are certifying the wrong things. You are sending the CV in the wrong format and all of that. So it be that's one of the things. Number two, I'm not sure if you are getting through to interviews, but um, your opponents are kicking your butt in interviews. So that could be another problem. Right, so we we would need to do a one-on-one -on -one session probably and sit down. Uh, we'll leverage, not destroy. We're the fetch army. Thank you, some yeah, when I kid you. guys. We are the fetch army. We don't destroy anybody. We just fetch, and in the process of fetching, we will leverage our networks. We will leverage our networks. Otherwise, what's the point of having a network that you don't leverage, right? But we do not destroy people. Uh, we do not destroy people. Um, yes, uh, yes. Okay, that's there. You go. Okti has put the details there. Right. So, guys, those are some tips that I have for you. The first tip that I have is that, guys, please try to have that conversation. Try to break through that wall. 
Do you also assist with updating CVs? I assist with LinkedIn and LinkedIn is in fact your CV, right? But we can look at both your CV and your LinkedIn. So yes, I do that, right? So when we do your LinkedIn session, um, then we can sort out both things. Definitely we can sort out both things, right? So guys, those are some tips. Go try and break that wall. Like, don't fear these toxic managers. They are wounded lions, guys. They are wounded lions. Once you pet them at the back or you, you brush their head, you will see, just like an injured dog, they will start to come down and then they will open up. Because you know, you are negotiating from a position of strength. You are stronger than them. That's why you are not toxic. That's why you are not destroying people. You are stronger than them. So you are, you are negotiating from a position of strength and you are negotiating uh, with a person who is weaker than you. They might have a higher position than you, but they are weaker than you because clearly they can't handle the pressure. That's why they're full of nonsense, right? So I would say try that, try and break it down, but also show them dependency. So maybe before you even start having a conversation with them, show them de dependency, right? Melt them. Why don't they just walk into the office and say, um, listen, um, uh, that spreadsheet that da 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 that uh, you wanted us to do in order to submit it that you were gonna do. Listen, I've already done half of it. Do you wanna have a look at it? And the person is gonna be like, "Damn, okay, I think I've got a I've got a partner here. I've got somebody who who's working with me here, right?" So melt them. You'll see they'll start breaking down, and then they'll start explaining to you why they are uh, toxic without you even asking. Jay, out of the blue, and they'll start crying in front of you. Then you know you've broken the wall. Then you're in a good spot then you are in a good spot, right? Because guys, remember you are doing this for you. You need them to be a reference. A reference that's a manager on your CV, especially a direct report, guys, is one of the most amazing ones. Guys, a CV where your manager is not a, 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 a reference, do you know that it's a red flag? Do you know that it's a red flag? You have somebody that you report to, but when you're submitting your job application to me and I'm looking at it, your current manager is not there. Why is your current manager not there? That's the question that we ask ourselves, right? Why doesn't your manager like you? Or why don't you like your manager? Or what are you hiding? If I call your manager, are you hiding that? Maybe there's, 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 there's things or it's a red flag. It's a very, very big red flag. And all, all you have is administrator and this person. It's a red flag, guys. Right? My CVs, when I used to put them out, I mean, my managers would be there. Because I built such a good relationship with them, they don't even get caught off guard. I'd be clear, hey, Prat, hey Pramdev, I'm looking for things now. You understand I need to grow. I'm born and now where I am. And they'll be like, yo, no, definitely. It's uh, no, spook our born. You know, it's time for you to. Or they'll sit down with me and say, okay, I don't negotiate it because you're looking for something. What is it that I can offer you for you to stay? And then I'll be honest and say, hey, Pratev, more I. I need to move somewhere else. I can feel who I'm ready for the next level. You know, and I'm sure you can support something like that because looking at, at your journey and all of that and whatnot, right? And then Deva would be like, okay, it's fine. Hey, can I put you as a reference? No, we're cool, my boy. You can put me as a reference. It's nice. It's nice. Sometimes, I, I mean, in, in, in two of the companies, I put the CEO there. Do you understand how easy it is for them to actually employ me? I put two of my CEOs there because I built a relationship with them. And they spoke nicely about me as a reference when they got called because they liked me and they believed it was time for me to move up. But now your manager is not there or none of the senior people in the current company are not there. It's a red flag. Yes, Lisa, it's a red flag. You understand? Uh, it's a red flag. It's said because some managers are just something else. Exactly. You know? So that's why I'm saying, guys, you need to build, you need to break that wall. It's going to benefit you. So it's the same thing with some of the job applications. Guys, references are not there to decorate the CV. We check them. I, I'm a director in companies right now. I know we check the references. And I know why we check them. And I know when I see a reference that has a CEO or a manager of a person, I know how excited I get. You know? Um, some managers are no longer working and I just feel like uh, it will be the wrong move when they are better. Of course, they, it will be giddy. That's why I'm saying, guys, we need to try and build those relationships or be in a better space with them. That's why I'm saying a relationship is not where you hug each other or all of that. You understand? I never thought of putting my CEO. I think I should from now on. Exactly. You know, Octi, as long as you have an open conversation with your CEO and they don't get caught off guard and you're like, hey, dude, listen here. Um, 
I'm growing, especially CEOs and directors, guys are the most understanding people. It's like, hey, listen, I'm growing. Um, I really enjoyed the time that you've given me and all of the opportunities, and I'm about to look for something else, not because I'm better with the company, you know, I'm more gravitating towards the construction sector now, you know, so I just wanted to let you know so that I don't catch you off guard. And also, it would be an honor for me if you, if, if you became um, a reference on my CV. Guys, it's communication. You talk because you've built that relationship. That's why I'm saying try and break. That hostility is not getting you anywhere. I can tell you right now. It's not getting you anywhere. What if I have my manager's manager as a reference and not the actual manager? Even better, Makoto. Even better, Makoto. Because you've got somebody else who's senior. The thing is, as long as you have somebody who's senior within your organization, even better. The problem is when all of your references are receptionist and admin, receptionist and admin, receptionist and admin. Guys, it's a red flag. It's, a red, it's, even, it's even nicer when you have even one of the clients. Even if when you have one of the clients, you know, guys, it's about guys. Don't be hostile towards management. Sometimes you are getting it wrong. There's a guy in one of the hubs. He was so hostile towards me. This guy was so hostile towards me. I don't know. And it could be something that I said and I did not realize that I said it. And I think I know what it is. It's because there was a project that was starting. And then he was behind with that project. And I reprimanded him. And then he say, he became hostile towards me. So he took that one moment and said, Kurisbuki Motomoso. But he started to get to know me and then he said to me, I don't know why I was hostile towards you. And in my head, I was like, it's because of one incident. At that time, we needed to do something. So what did you expect me to do? You were behind with your project. I must hug you. And if I don't hug you and I reprimand you, I'm toxic. Guys, come on now. Come on now. I'm just keeping you in line. And then after I rep reprimanded him, he was angry for seven months. Now I forgot that moment as soon as he said, I'll sort it out. I was cool with him. But people think getting reprimanded is war. So guys, what must we do? So we mustn't check you. Come on now. Can't work like that. Uh, when we apply, we keep... As, that is a secret. We don't want them to know that we are looking for a job. And that's... And you know, Asi, let me tell you something. Sometimes it's because of this fear that we have and whatnot, right? And sometimes it's just a matter of actually going there and sitting down with them and say, Hey, manager, you see, you, you've seen how I've been growing, right? And you know I like this company. But you know, man, you, you, you yourself, if you have a good relationship, you can even reference something and say, you yourself said you see a lot of potential in me. And I think there's a company that has a specific um, uh, opportunity. I mean, that's what I do with my clients. I mean, my clients, they even send me messages and they're like, hey, coach, um, do you think I should phrase it like this to my manager to tell them that I'm about to leave? I said, no, don't phrase it like that. This is too harsh, right? It sounds like you are angry. Um, just say... Um, you know, tell them that you appreciated their support. You feel like they grew, they grew you know, they, they gave you the right kind of growth and you want to try something else. And, you, you know, it would be an honor if you had their support. You speak to a person like that, they think differently. Thank you, Coach. You're opening our minds here. Thank you. That's because you guys are the Fetch Army, right? The Fetch Army, we do things differently for those who are new. For those who are new, guys, we call ourselves the Fetch Army because we are fetching executive positions and we apply a different mindset we don't want to be like the guys in the kitchen that are gossiping and whatnot we find solutions in terms of how can we move ourselves forward and we do it practically because we are the fetch army guys right so if you're not following me guys please make sure that you follow now so that we can officially welcome you as part of the fetch army we do things differently right my workplace is too toxic i just want to leave so go to kerempodem.co.za go look for an article that says how to leave your toxic your work toxic work environment properly it's on kerempodem.co.za please read it you're going to get some good tips there don't leave now and stay at home your mental health is going to be worse building a relationship with my hod but i don't know what she thinks of me is it advisable to ask her lisa yes and guys that's another thing right you need to communicate with managers like you're communicating with somebody from the street or a friend. I mean, that would be, a, a, let me tell you, Lisa, that would be a heartwarming conversation. I'm telling you, for your HOD, is going to be heartwarming for you to sit down and say, listen, I just wanted to have a chat with you. What do you think about my progress so far and whatnot? Managers love it when people open up because we think everybody hates us. So whenever we get somebody who loves us and they're opening up, oh, we feel so warm. And that builds this long-lasting relationship. 
You understand? That's why I'm saying whenever I used to go to my manager and be like, um, listen, I can see you busy today. Do you want me to take to take this meeting? The, the client is already at the reception. And be like, oh, thank you so much, Spoo. You can take this meeting because I am so swamped. I'm like, I got you. Don't worry. So they love it when these things happen. So Lisa, I think, oh, Lisa, I'm looking forward to your story. I think yours is going to be an amazing one. You must come back and tell us as a belief. I recently visited my former office. It's refreshing to see the execs welcoming. You see, Lati, guys, that's the thing. You know, that is the thing. The problem is when you don't have experience, just finished studying. So who do you write as a reference? So, Sbo, what you want to do is two options. Number one, everybody who's a new graduate, I would always, I always advise you to go volunteer somewhere. Go and volunteer somewhere. Right, because when you volunteer somewhere, you start using uh, those organizations as references. So always build experience, guys. Always build experience and volunteering in a non-profit organization, your church, uh, your local soccer team, and whatnot, guys. Those things are important. Don't. If you are a graduate, start doing it while you're in third year. In actual fact, it does not have to be related to your to your field of study because we understand that you don't have experience in your field of study. But if you can show us that you've been in a position where you worked in an organization, you worked with people. People, you reported to somebody and all of that, right? We, we just want to see that you've communicated with a group of people. That becomes important. Um, Alas came here when you were doing our LinkedIn profile. However, I'm in for the Fetch Army. Yes, 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 yes. Kenny Stocko. Stocko. Yes, you. Thank you. Welcome to the Fetch Army, right? So come through. Come through. We do solutions here. Refila, we do solutions here. We have, because, guys, let me tell you why we do solutions. Because we have to find solutions. We have to find solutions. Guys, do you know what complaining is? Going on and on and on and on and on and on, right? And not trying to find a solution. Guys, it's the most tiring thing ever. That crew in the kitchen, I don't know how they do it. I don't know how those, they, those people that hang out in the kitchen complain the whole day by the coffee machine. There, We can't even make coffee. We're trying to make coffee, but it's chining. We can't even make a cappuccino at work. We end up having to go buy a coffee outside. I don't know how they do it. So, guys, there has to be a breakthrough with your manager. But one, I, I really love this one. Um, yeah, Lisa. I, I really love Lisa's one. I really love Lisa's one. Like, I'm going to go there and find out how do you feel about me. Guys, it's building that relationship. That person is going to be your reference. That person is going to gonna see you differently. And they're going to open up opportunities for you. And the one who's toxic, just go to them and see how you can break them down. They're a wounded dog. They're not as strong as you think they are. They're not as strong as you think they are. Somebody needs to be... You are in a position of strength, so you can control this conversation with a toxic person. Yes, the moment you walk in, they're going to give you attitude and, and, and talk to you while they're typing and all of that and whatnot, right? But you, you must just look at them and say, I understand, this is a weak person. I'm the strong one here. You must try and break it down. Break that wall. But if they're just full of nonsense, like the company that my wife worked for, my wife had the hardest time um, at her first job. She had the hardest time. Like these two people were just toxic. Like we tried each and every plan and it just didn't work. It was actually getting to a point where whenever she was trying to question something and that's when we, we said this is enough. They put a warning letter in her file and I said, babe, yeah, no, here things are not going to change. And she loved that company. Because she knew she can grow in that company. But unfortunately, she had to leave the manager, which includes leaving the company. I mean, once they start messing with you, they're putting warning letters and what, what. I mean, you're going to get a dismissal. That is just destroying you. You understand? But as long as it hasn't gotten there, guys, there's still hope. A little bit of hope. Uh, any tips for someone who wants a promotion, qualified with lots of experience? Makoto, go to kereempoream.co.za. Go check an article that says how to get a job promotion fast. That will give you all of the tips that you need, how to get a job promotion fast. It's on Just click on the blog section. You will find the article there. I've got practical tips for you that helped me get a promotion very quickly, very quickly everywhere I went. That's why I became an executive at age 35, guys. It's because I was moving. There are tips and tricks, right? We're close to 30K likes. Let's double tap the screen, guys. So, guys, please, um, I'm not saying this is easy. That's why I'm saying it's a very complicated position to be in when you have to build a relationship uh, with your manager. It's, it's, it's complex, guys. It's not as simple as this. Today, I just wanted us to explore and come up with some ways. But the thing is, I want you to always put the advantage in mind. Guys, putting your manager as a reference is one of the most beautiful things. Beautiful things. Um, I have a job shadowing coming up. Any tips? Um, Kenis, learn as much as you can. 
when you're in a job shadowing position, learn as much as you can. Whenever you're shadowing somebody, always have a notepad and a pen. Write each and everything down, especially the processes, right? Understand what they do when they come in, how they move from one desk to another, what they check in their computers, because understanding processes and systems ultimately helps you to understand what a job is. So I would say learn as much as you can. Ask questions. There's no such thing as a stupid question. You understand? That's what we need to do. Um, it's a pleasure, Lisa. Uh, being solution-based in a workplace also assists in climbing the ladder quickly. And that's what we're doing. Guys, we are the Fetch Army. Our end goal is to get to executive positions. That's what we're doing as the Fetch Army. We are trying to get into executive positions. We are not trying to be career dropouts. We don't want to drop out halfway. When you start first year, you must end up at graduation. When you start at entry-level position, you must get to directorship position. And that's what we are shooting for. So, guys, if you missed any of the masterclasses, go check them out on YouTube. They are there, right? On LinkedIn, go check the blog articles. Just follow follow, uh, follow Kere Emporium on LinkedIn. That's where I've got all of the, of, of the blog articles, right? If it's too difficult for you to navigate them directly on the website, which is kereemporium.co.za, you can navigate them on the other page on, 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 on LinkedIn, right? And then, guys, please, let's keep dreaming big. Don't let people tell you that you'll never be an executive. Those people are scared. That's why. Because when they fail, they are scared. They're going to tell you, ah, you are dreaming too big. Da, 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 da. That's not going to work. And, guys, please work on your stress management. Work on your stress management. If you don't, if you don't play a sport or you don't run or you don't work out, please find something today. Because stress is part of work. Some people are walking around looking for jobs that don't have stress. I don't know where you're going to find a job that doesn't have stress. I, 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 I promise you. Even the best companies, somebody's like, yeah, I want to work for Facebook because there people are also are always so chilled and there's a pool table and whatnot. Okay, fine, go work there. And you will see at some point in your portfolio, at least twice a week, there's going to be a stressful situation. That's because workplaces are designed to be stressful. Anything that requires you to apply yourself is designed to be stressful. Otherwise, stay at home mom or stay at home, uh, stay at home uh, dad uh, or get a rich husband or get a rich woman, uh, then you will be sorted. But as long as you are the one who's supplying yourself, who's growing yourself, stress is something you, can, you can't avoid. Guys, thank you so much. Life is designed to be stressful. Exactly. I don't even discuss with people stress anymore and how difficult life is anymore. Why, why are we even discussing that? It's been difficult before you. You understand? It's been difficult before your grandparents. Why are we even discussing how difficult life? Life is difficult. We know it. It's difficult for dogs. It's difficult for cats. It's difficult for birds. Go watch National Geographic. You'll see how difficult it is for zebras as well. Zebra is trying to drink water, crocodile. Zebra is trying to eat grass, lion. There's nothing we can do. So we will never discuss, hey, life is difficult. I don't, I, I don't want to even hear that. We know, we are fully, fully, fully aware that life is difficult. You know, yes, show me, go ask the zebras in the Kalahari. You will see, life is not easy. Life is not easy. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, you know. So why are we still having the conversations about that? Why are we still talking about that? Go to the Kalahari, go ask the zebra. It will tell you. Guys, thank you so much for coming through. We're going to close this. I'm going to give you guys shout outs. Uh, the other day, I didn't give you guys shout outs. I was overwhelmed. But today, I'm ready to give you shout outs. So somebody, please start the train in the comments. So that we can close out this live. And then I can give you guys shout out. There you go. Nanali has started the train. Guys, all of comments. Put hashtag fetch army. Let's go. Let's start the train. I'm going to give you guys shout out. If you're not following me, make sure that you follow me right now. Let me give you guys your shout outs. All 74 of 75 of you. Show me. Thank you so much for the conversation today. I really appreciate you, my friend. Um, I, it really was great chatting to you. And thank you for the gifts. Christopher, thank you so much. And thank you for the gifts. Thank you for coming through and the interaction. Nanali, Kim Samse Kazi, thank you for coming through. Thank you for moderating. I really appreciate you. Faith, Red Shark Security, thank you for the gifts. Thank you for coming through. But Toby, these lives are nothing without you I really, really, really appreciate you Kiri, thank you for the interaction I really appreciate you Toby Lemuloye, thank you for coming through Ntoki, thank you for coming through Calvin, ask is At least you got a new phone You know, maybe your phone was old You know, Calvin Maybe you needed to replace it But I'm sorry, cut two finger Lele, thank you for coming through Nobu, I see you Lati M, thank you for interacting Buitumel, I see you Wendy, I see you Lost Boy, I see you Kumbu, I see you Mrs. Ney, Refilwe 
I see you. I hope you are going to get the guest control. Lady D, I see you. Uh, Mafloza, I see you. User72, I see you. I see, I see you. Thank you for the interaction. NN, I see you. Masingita, I see you. Matipi, I see you. Uh, Kumi, Kumi, I see you. Joshu, thank you for coming through. I will see you later. Thank you for coming through. Kaleo, thank you for coming through, my friend. I see you a lot. Thank you for being loyal to the Fetch Army. Becky N, I see you. Mpo M Projects, thank you for coming through. Naima, I see you. Thank you for coming through and interacting. Smo, I see you. Uh, Shula Kazi, I see you. NFCBC, I see you. Makoto, thank you for coming through. Don't forget to check the blog articles, Makoto. Um, Kiamaku, I see you. Sosan, I see you. Kumo, I see you. Franz K, I see you. Sherio, I see you. Filwe, I see you. Uh, Motebang, I see you. User 81, I see you. Nompu, I see you. Love Tando, I see you. Tido D, I see you. Lindy Wejuju, I see you. YV, I see you. On Point Bear, I see you. Tumisho, I think, yes. And Anthony Ramodireka, I see you. Ezi, I see you. Alina, I see you. Lisa, thank you for the interaction. I see you. And I'm, I can't wait to hear how that conversation went. Seriously. Lulu, I see you. User 32, I see you. Klingiwe, I see you. Uh, Leticia, I see you. User 41, I see you. Matabo, I see you. Rams, Ramsey, I see you. Wayne, I see you. Shadow, I see you. Prudence, I see you. Tessa, I see you. User 44, four, I see you. User 30, Bo user Mang Mang, please change your names and put profile picture so that I can give you proper shout outs. Tulisile, I see you. Mantua, I see you. Mantua from Yizo, Yizo. Kanyaho, I see you. Uh, Niobache, I see you. I am pretty, I see you. And Amen says, I see you. Guys, thank you so much for coming through. I really appreciate you. If Escom willing, I will be back tomorrow if there's no funny power outages. Thank you so much, Shumi Shumza. I will be back tomorrow at 2 o'clock. We do these master classes every day at 2 o'clock. We are the Fetch Army. We don't feel sorry for ourselves. We keep pushing. Mashori, I see you, right? We keep pushing. We don't feel sorry for ourselves. We, we grow. We're fetching executive positions. We are the next breed of executives, guys. Mwah! Love you so much. I'll see you tomorrow at 2 o'clock. And always where you go, remember... You guys are the Fetch Army. Shop, shop.